Rings of Fire, Book 6, Moon Rising, Chapter 9. This is the start of Part 2. But you can't be, Moon whispered, then realized that she'd spoken aloud when Sora looked up and blinked at her. She turned toward the wall and thought, Darkstalker lived over 2,000 years ago. I know, he sighed. I've been asleep a long time, apparently. I suspect this bracelet was supposed to keep me that way forever. So what happened? Moon asked. Why are you awake now? It's broken, he said. After 2,000 years, almost anything becomes weaker. Something must have jarred it and snapped it off. The earthquakes? Moon wondered. There was a comet six months ago. As it passed by, there were a lot of earthquakes and strange weather. That's when I woke up, he said. So you're probably right. Moon hesitated. Six months ago was when her nightmares had started. The ones about Jade Mountain falling. Was she fi seeing visions of something that would ultimately be caused by Darkstalker's awakening? I'm not actually a monster, no matter what the squirrels and ghost stories say, he said. Can't you tell? Where are you? she asked instead of answering. That I don't know. Somewhere dark, covered in stone. I can't move. I can only think. He let in an odd sort of chuckle. Perhaps you can see why I was so pleased to find you. I can hear others, but no one else can hear me. Makes for a lot of very boring, one-sided conversations. She didn't know what else to say. She had expected, well, another dragon like her. Expected some, someone she could meet and go find with. She did not expect to be talking to the legendary monster of Nightwing Nightmares. I'm not a monster, he said again quietly. Seems history has painted me that way. But perhaps that's what happens when you disappear before you can tell your own story, and only your enemies are left to finish it. All your best friends turn enemies, apparently. Moon rolled back to the dark stalker section of the scroll. A handsome dark face stared regally out at her. He had the silver scales in the corner of his eyes, too. Formidable dragon, dark stalker said with mild amusement. I suppose that's true, but it's not my fault I was born with all these powers. I think you know something about that. I've never been plotted to steal any thrones, though, Moon thought, pointed out, or killed my father. I think you would if you'd had my father. I saved a tribe from him, Darkstalker argued. He was a lot worse than I am. The scroll's version of the story is highly oversimplified. As for being queen king, why not? Just because we've only ever had queens, does that mean a king does that mean a king is impossible? Why would I have all these gifts if I wasn't supposed to use them to lead and protect the tribe? It felt as though he'd suddenly seized her mind in an iron grip. Moon winced, touching her head. Listen, Darkstalker said. I can see the future, but not just any future. All the possible futures. Do you understand what that means? I could have guided the tribe along the best path to safety and glory and power and everything else. At each crossroad, I would have known the right thing to do. I loved my tribe, Moon Watcher. I would have been the best ruler they'd ever had. I know it. I saw the futures where I was king. Benevolent and beloved. Married to Clearsight with six little dragonettes of our own. Those were possible. They could have happened if anyone had faith in me. He paused and then went on. She saw them too. Clearsight had the gift of prophecy as strong as mine. She knew those futures existed, but she also saw the ones where I turned toward evil destroying instead of protecting. She didn't believe me that I would avoid those paths. In the end, I guess she didn't believe in me at all. I wonder what happened to her. There was another really long pause. This is going to sound weird, Moon offered, but I kind of want to give you a hug right now. Dark Soccer barked a laugh. How did she surprise you then? Moon asked. If you could see all the futures, how did she trick you with the bracelet? I had too much faith in her, he said. I saw the possibility that she would betray me in more than one future, but further down the line. I didn't want to believe it, so I never studied those paths, just as she was supposed to stop looking down my darker paths as well. Up until the last moment, even with the visions of blackness pressing against me, I still thought I could change her mind, that I could talk her into trusting me so we could fly into our bright, perfect future. He made a kind of growl, and but Moon couldn't tell quite was what was behind it. Bitterness? Revenge? Despair? Loneliness? I never saw any of this back then, though. I suppose property, prophecy doesn't extend 2,000 years forward, not even for me. So you don't know what happens next, Moon said. 
All I can see is darkness, he said softly. All I can do is hope. Hope for what? Hope for someone to set me free. You specifically. Moon jumped up, dropping the animus history scroll. Starflight turned his head towards her, and Sora blinked up in surprise. Sorry, Moon said. Just had a thought. How can I set you free? She cried. I'm nobody. We have no idea where you are. And you're, you're the most dangerous dragon in Furia history, Dark Darkstalker Dark said dryly. dryly. You shouldn't believe everything you read, Moon. Even if I did agree to, to do it, Moon thought, which I'm not saying I will. How can I do it? There's something I need, he said. Moon, King of Duke called, sticking her head into the library. Didn't you hear the three gongs? We have to get to history class. Sora, you too. Sora scrambled to her feet, dropped her scroll with a clatter, and fumbled around trying to roll it back up. Moon picked up the animus histories, wondering if she could skip class somehow. She kind of wanted to keep talking to Darkstalker, which would be hard to do in a cave full of dragons, all thinking at the top of their brains. Hi, Starflight. I'm super excited, Kinkajou said. I don't know anything about history. I have like a million questions for Web. Like, what's the scorching? And is it true that there used to be scavengers everywhere? And who started the Talons of Peace? And what's that big icewing tragedy from the past? And a scream of terror suddenly echoed through the tunnels. Help! Somebody shrieked. More tunnels. More screams and the clamor of running dragons joined the tumult. The Skywing! She's here to kill us all!